Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to talk about my Smart Nora integration and how I integrated my Smart Nora or basically Google Assistant with my existing home automation system which is based on an industrial PLC. And I mentioned this in my recent video where I talked about Smart Nora and I said I'm just going to glance over how I did it because I thought it is really a, a you know, specific sort of like edge case. I don't think that there would be, you know, many homes where the automation or the actual, you know, controlling lights and, and other stuff is done by a PLC. Uh, I mean, if it is, then you most probably want to add voice control, which we, you can use Node-RED. So basically I'm using Node-RED as a middleware to translate between the PLC and uh, between Google Assistant using Smart Nora. And this time I don't want to make my flow public. I think what I'm going to do, I might just pick a few of the function nodes where most of the logic is. And of course, once you, you know, watch the video, you can, you, you will know how to, how to put it together. So first of all, um, if I go back to PLC, oh, by the way, I did a video on my home automation as well, where I showed you the PLC and, you know, how it's controlling stuff and, you know, inputs and, and everything. Um, and in that video, I mentioned that I have pretty much the entire house look, uh, hooked up to PLCs. Uh, actually, there are multiple PLCs for, you know, for uh, technical reasons. And all my light switches are basically just momentary switches. So they all go to the PLC and then the PLC would then control an output which um, has a relay and that switches, you know, 240 volt mains and that goes to the lights. So my lights are, you know, not smart lights. They just regular LED light bulbs uh, or, you know, down lights and they are just getting, you know, 240 volts um, like it would be, you know, controlled by a regular um, light switch. So there is nothing special about that. To be honest, I didn't want to spend the extra money on things like, you know, LED, uh, sorry, RGB lights and dimmable lights because to be honest, in most cases, I wouldn't dim them anyway. I wouldn't change the colors. I just want the lights to be on and off. So that was the reason. And of course, it's, uh, it's, it just makes it cheaper and it's easy to interchange. So in terms of the, the whole integration, uh, I want, um, we have to talk about two main things. Um, and these are the flags and the registers. Um, in different PLCs, so the PLCs that I'm using are SIA PLCs. Um, so for SIA calls, flags, anything which is binary. So like, you know, on off things, inputs, digital inputs, digital outputs. So those are the flags. And registers are, uh, well, anything which is like an integer number, like uh, temperature readings, um, state of the blinds, you know, percentage, uh, that sort of stuff. So what we have done on the PLC side is we have basically just opened up the registers to Modbus because I figured the only way, well, probably the easiest way for me to integrate a industrial PLC and Node-RED if I'm going to be using Modbus and I'm actually using Modbus TCP. So, well, Node-RED is obviously on the local network. The PLC is also connected to my local home network so they can just talk to each other easily. And uh, so I'm getting these flags and the registers. So the flags are basically the state of the various lamps. Um, and the registers are the couple of uh, temperature readings and the and the blinds that I am getting from the um, from the PLC, and I'm pushing that data over to Node-RED. And if you look at the flow, it looks a little bit complicated, but that's mainly because while well, I still have a lot of historical code here from when I was using GBridge IO and that obviously got discontinued and I started, I also kept most of the flow and then I started creating new parts in the flow, which then works with, you know, Nora, the previous Nora integration. And then, well, again, Nora also got depreciated or discontinued. And now I have migrated to Smart Nora just about a week ago. Um, and, you know, with the Nora integration, you have to have one node for each of your devices. So your flow becomes a little bit, well, not complicated, but it just becomes a lot because I do have a lot of stuff 
So these up here are temperature readings. So I have, what is it? This is uh, six and another five. So I have 11 temperature readings. I, I even have a more analog data, like, you know, um, the, the level of water in the cistern and some of the other stuff, but I don't really need that in Google Home. So I haven't brought that information over. I also have seven blinds, motorized blinds, and I have a bunch of lights. So these are all my lights all over the house and some of the other ancillary stuff. So for example, garage door, the main pump, which is um, pumping the well water and a couple of other stuff like, you know, sono, a few Sonoff sono, sono basics dotted around the house. But let's start from the beginning. Maybe I should do the, um, the temperature readings first, because I think that would be uh, easier to handle. Oh, actually, before I do that. So what um, I have done is, um, because I have all these many devices, and the way you run Modbus is you... For example, if I want to get all the temperature readings, then I say, okay, I want to get the temperature readings, or sorry, the holding registers from, uh, uh, from the PLC, because these registers on the SIA PLC are mapped to holding registers in Modbus. So I want to get the holding registers, and I know that they start from address uh, 1000, and I want to get 20 of them. So that would be like, you know, 20 readings. So what you are getting, in uh, from the mode bus is a big array of the values and i mean i could have started slicing them up but uh, that would make the code really really complicated so what i decided is i'm going to have a whole logic where i basically translate the mode bus address to a topic and then that topic is going to drive which um, uh, Nora node is going to receive the message. So actually, let me show that in the um, uh, in the flags. So these are my flags, which says, you know, light switches and other flags. So if I want to read the flags, um, the flags are mapped as coils in Modbus. So I'm just using Modbus address, uh, sorry, Modbus function one, address 1000. And actually I'm reading a quantity of 1000. So there's loads of stuff. And, and again, there is a lot of stuff that I'm not bringing over to Nora, but I'm just reading the whole stuff because um, they are a little bit all over the place in the uh, address register or the flag register in the PLC. So I'm just, you know, getting 1000. And um, probably this is also uh, why it's a good idea that I have the whole thing in Modbus, uh, sorry, in TCP, not in uh, uh, serial because I don't think it's an awful lot of information, but I'm pulling it at every two seconds. So uh, maybe it could be a little bit too much for a serial communication. I'm not really sure. And in the server settings or in the mode bus settings, you can see that, you know, I'm just addressing the PLC using a local IP, you know, default port, nothing special. So every two seconds, I'm getting a data of a thousand uh, registers. So if I turn on the debug, you can see that I have an array of 1000. And that's basically all my registers starting from, you know, register 1000. And you can see all the, uh, the values here. So because these are flags coils, so they are either true or false. So this would correspond to, you know, all of my lights and, and a lot of other stuff. Um, and, you know, that's a lot of data. So what I decided to do well, first of all, every two seconds I'm getting these 1000 flags. And of course, only a few would change at any given time. So what I'm doing here, I've created this uh, check data function node, which reads through these thousand values, and then it stores them in a context, and then it gets the the previous value in the context, so it can tell whether it that particular flag or that particular register, well, sorry, flag, has changed from the last um, synchronization or the last download. And if I go into the context data, and if I refresh, then, oh, sorry, this is a context variable. So if I refresh the context, you can see the old, which contains, again, you know, the thousand, 
uh, so the basically data which is coming in and then it, it you know checks what has changed and, and then it also going to show me how much has changed so you know since the last download 11 of them has changed so then I'm pushing all these delta through this function node so here I'm getting a thousand trues or falses and then once it exits here, uh, it's going to send me a bunch of individual messages of the things that have changed. So if I turn off this debug node, and if I turn this one on, we should see some differences. Actually, we might not see any differences. I think this number doesn't update if the, 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 if the data is zero. But let's see. Yeah, we are not getting any change. So let me change the lamp in my study. One second. Oh yeah, so now we can see that uh, two registers have changed. Register 134 and 234. I think they, uh, the reason I'm getting two because one of them is the actual input to the fact that I press the light switch and the other one is the output which turned the lamp on. And this node is doing this because I have created um, a whole object of the things that you know, I want to monitor. Oh, by the way, you can see some G-Bridge stuff, which, you know, from the G-Bridge integration that I'm not using anymore. So I have a big array, uh, which is called, the, you know, the devices object. So I'm listing all the devices here, and I'm listing the, the name of the device, and I'm listing the port, so you can see the port 134. So if there is a change on port 134, which is the, you know, the index number in the array, then I know that something has happened uh, to the, this particular light. And I also know that if I want to change that light, I have to write to the write port, which is 243. So they are a difference of 100 because I think this is how we created the flags in the PLC. And again, these two attributes are for the G-Bridge integration, which are obsolete now. But again, I have created this flow many years back when I started with G-Bridge. So here it shows me all the lights. So when it is looking for changes in the, you know, what has been sent by the PLC previously and what has been sent now, then if, I, if it finds a difference, then it starts looking up in this list of, you know, is there a matching read port uh, with the array index and then if it matches then it knows what light has turned on okay so this is the output i'm getting and then uh, it was this one yes that was the data check and then this information well first of all it goes to another function node which says redirect updates to nora and this just does another translation of the uh, of the values. So it is going to check the topic, which has the, the port number. And then actually here it matches what is the what is the device? Do I have a device with this port number? And then if I, if I have a device, then it's going to send it's going to change the topic to the device name and then that's going to be sent through. So for example, if I have a, let me check an example. Uh, let me check something which has an English name, which I don't think it's going to have any. Yeah, because all my, all, all these names are Hungarian names. Anyway, so uh, the registers come in and it, sorry, not this one. It's further down. So the register come in, it goes into the check data. So the check data is going to send individual messages where it shows, it gives me the index and whether the new value is true or false. Then the next one checks if this index matches with any of the devices. And then it puts this device name into the topic. And once we have done that, so this is what has happened here. And then it goes to a node, and as you can see, this is where it goes to all the um, function nodes. Sorry, all the uh, smart Nora nodes. And then for each of the smart Nora nodes, I'm doing a topic check. So if this topic is this one, which is a study, then only then it's going to only then the you know the data is going to be forwarded 
to the port here, and then it goes to the corresponding smart node or node. So it knows that, okay, that's my light, so the information goes in, so then the, you know, the state of the light gets updated in NORA. So I don't have a debug node here, but uh, so now you can see that I changed the uh, switch on the light in the study. So, you know, 134 got changed and that maps to this word. So when the message comes here, this is going to be true. So the message goes forward onto the Smart Nora node and then the state changes in Smart Nora. So at the moment it's on and the light is on. So let me switch it off. I just press the thingy and now we can see that we received the false and then it has come through. So now it is showing that my study light is off. So that's how the, the update from the PLC is updating, uh, uh, sorry, this is how the update from the PLC is updating Google Home or Home Assistant. Sorry, not Home Assistant, Google Home. So if I go here, for example, that's my study. I have two lights. One of the light is still on, but I can see that the study light is now off. So that's the, and that's the study light. Maybe I could have done it in a, you know, slightly more elegant way, but I thought I just push everything through and then here I'm just going to filter out the messages that I need with all of these, um, you know, switch nodes. So basically I just have to make sure that this, um, you know, the topic here in the filter matches what is in then intended for the, you know, the particular Smart Nora light node. And since I'm doing all these, you know, validations, what has been turned on, what has been turned off, I thought that I'm also going to, oh, you can see that's the G-Bridge output. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's not being used anymore. And what I thought I would also use, or well, sorry, do in, in this one here, so in, in the rest of the flow, it is actually measuring how long each of the light was on. Not that I'm really using it for anything, but since I have all the information here, I thought, you know, I might just, you know, maybe I would be interested to know which lights I'm going to be, or which, which lights I'm using most in the, in the house. So, you know, if you, if you need to decide which lights you need to, you know, turn, let's say from filament to LED lights, well, you can do the statistics and then you can even calculate how much you would be saving by changing the lights. And that is also done in this node. And here, if I go to the context, and I, I think it's this one, yeah, the, um, it is all saved in this on time variable. So you can see here that I have all the lights here. And, and for example, where is the study? Oh, this one. So <clears throat> apparently it's online for 508 seconds today. And I'm saying today, because further down in the flow, okay, that's still G-Bridge, that's not used anymore. Um, yeah, it's here. I'm actually saving the on-time statistics. So this triggers, I think, midnight every day, no, three o'clock. And in the on-time stats, um, basically I go through this whole array that you can see here in the on-time, and for each of the values, I generate a database entry and I'm saving this information into the same sensor table that I use for so many other things in my in my flow so you can see you know it is saving saving the uh, the from date which I think I default to no I just leave it on yeah I still just leave it on three o'clock I think and then I get the on time so I store the 508 at 3 a.m. and then and then I just reset the values. So I just clear everything here. So then it gets start counting from the from you know from the beginning of day. So it gives you it well it's supposed to give me the statistics for every single day, how long each of my lights were on. And I'm guessing this might be missing a few lights which maybe I haven't even switched on today. Something like that. So that's the whole statistic thing. And 
this small flow here is uh, is a very specific flow because one of the flag is also storing whether my alarm is on or off. So usually when we um, you know go to sleep, I turn on the alarm, so the security alarm, which basically alarms the, the downstairs because all our bedrooms are upstairs. And what I also use this information here is uh, this just checks whether the you know the topic is 16. I think that's the address for the alarm status. And then based on that, it sends an MQTT topic. So I have a few of my home-built ESP-based devices which have uh, displays and they just go to sleep mode. And when they uh, receive this data in the sleep topic, they just um, basically turn off that display. So they don't illuminate when you know nobody's watching. So that's all about the flags and how it gets updated. <laughs> Look at this. Funny. Okay. Yeah, I'm just using in and out nodes, so I don't see all these lines all the time. But basically they just link to the you know the in nodes in the same flow. Shoops. And next is the blind positions. And so the the you know the lights are obviously flags. The blind positions are registers. So I need to use uh, modbus function 3, so read holding registers, and uh, my blinds are from address 1500, and again, I'm reading 20. I'm not sure why I'm reading 20. Maybe I could have read less a little bit as well. And, you know, I don't need this to update very often, so I'm using a polling rate of 10, so every 10 seconds. But basically, it goes through the same thing. So it goes into a data check node, we checks uh, the data values. The difference here is I'm also getting an array out of this uh, function node, sorry, out of this uh, mode bus node. But now because these are registers, they are not an array of true or falses or Boolean values, but the array of um, you know, actual integer values. So the logic is exactly the same. It is checking whether it's different from the previous one. To be honest, I think this code is probably exactly the same as the, the one below because it doesn't really care whether they are two, trues or falses or, you know, ones to tens to 100 or whatever. So again, it checks the difference. As you can see, there's no difference. And then it does the same redirection to Nora, which is, it pretty much does the same thing as before. So it translates the port, which comes through in the topic, to a, you know, a device name. Uh, which is stored in the in the configuration and and then the information is going to go into the smart Nora blind node which expects a, in the payload it expects an object which has an open percent attribute and uh, the reason I'm doing this um, division because the way the the value the percentage value is stored in the PLC it is stored with a value times, uh, you know, 10. So 100% um, comes through as a value of 1000. So I just have to divide it by one, sorry, by 10. And, and the reason this um, function node is a little bit uh, shorter because, uh, well, obviously there is no on time for blind. So I'm not doing all the on time calculation. And for the registers, I've created a separate object, which is very similar to the uh, flag objects. So they also have a name and they have a read port and the write port and these two things which are obsolete. Um, so again, I'm translating from the um, uh, register addresses to basically topics, which I use later on. So, so I do the delta check and I do the, the NORA translation, which is basically the converting the numbers to those uh, IDs. And then this doesn't do anything. This is just the, you know, the uh, collect the lines, basically just group them together. And then the thing here is exactly the same. So I'm doing, you know, topic checks. So if the topic is this one, then it should update this blind. And of course it's going to ignore for everything else. So that's the update for, for the blinds. And I have a, a set of Modbus register reads for the temperature readings. And they are pretty much work exactly the same as blinds. So 
you can see that I'm just reading from address 1000, quantity of 10, 20, and address, uh, uh, sorry, 1200, and I think this is probably 1300. Yeah, 1300, quantity of 5. Um, because they are just, you know, coming from different PLCs within the network, so they are mapped to different ranges. Anyway, doesn't matter. And I'm doing, you know, data checks. Um, yep. And here it all goes to some simple switch node. And here I'm not even translating the registers to, um, you know, IDs or names because I don't have so many. So, you know, I know that, you know, a particular room temperature always comes in, you know, in, in, in the array in index zero or one or two. So I'm just doing that. And I have added one debounce and then formatting. And I've done this because I've noticed that my temperature sensors, uh, they are actually PT1000 sensors, they do, you know, um, go up and down like uh, sort of like half a degree or 0.1 degree. So every time you read, you are actually getting different readings because they just go up and down a little bit. And um, I didn't feel the need that I need to, you know, send every single update to Google Home. I, I don't know if Google Home would reject if you are sending too many updates to it. But actually in the debunks, I think I said that, uh, you know, don't send reading more frequent than 30 seconds. Um, and of course it checks whether, you know, what was the last time the reading was sent, and then it only sends if it changes and if the, you know, the previous one was uh, more than 30 seconds ago. And when you are sending an update to a NORA temperature node, then the payload has as an object which has a temperature attribute. And again, the temperature value is, um, you know, times 10. So 25.5 25 degrees comes to rest 255. So I just divide the value by five to get the, the actual value that I want to, you know, send over. So you can see all the temperature readings here. And, um, and I've configured all these NORA or these Google Home temperature sensors not to have any sort of modes. So I'm never passing any mode value or mode information through. I'm just, you know, passing temperature. That's it. And of course, there is no control on the temperature sensors. So they don't actually work as thermostats. So I just don't care if if anything changes on the Google Home app, it's it's not going to do anything. This is why nothing is connected to the output port of these nodes. So with this, I think we have already gone through all the things, how I, you know, do the, I don't know whether it's called the inbound or outbound. It depends on where you look at it. So this is how I process changes on the mode bus and how I sync that data into Google Home but I'm also going to show how I do the other way around, which is going to be, you know, fairly similar. Well, first of all, if any information, so if I change the blind, so if I, for example, ask my Google Assistant to open the blinds, then the message is going to come through these output nodes, sorry, the output port of these uh, nodes. And what I have done here is I've, um, use the similar technique in reverse what I have just talked about. So when the data comes through with from Google Home or from Smart Nora, then I make sure that the topic is the correct topic that I've uh, maintained in the, you know, within the big configuration JSON. So for example, these, that topic, how the information comes in, matches with the topic, how the information goes out. And then basically I just do a reverse translation of the topic to the address value. So again, I'm looking at the register data and I'm checking, you know, do I find a name, a device name, which is matching the topic. And if I do, then I know that I can, you know, the register that I need to update is the, you know, the right port and plus 1000 because I know that and, you know, those are um, created with an offset of 1000. And I'm basically updating a single register. So 
if if I want the if I ask Google Home to uh, inc sorry to open the blinds or close the blinds, then the information comes through. So that I need to update the corresponding register on the PLC using Modbus. So you want to write a single register, which is Modbus function six. Well, the unit ID is one. Well, with Modbus TCP, it's always one. So the address is, as I said, it comes from the write port, plus I do a fixed 1000 offset. I, always, I only want to update one single register, so the quantity is one. And the value is the, well, the open percent times 10. So on the other way in, I was dividing by 10. Now I'm multiplying by 10. And that information basically just goes into a Modbus write. And I'm using this Modbus flex write, where you don't specify, you know, the address and and the Modbus function because it's all specified in the input message. That's why I'm doing here. So not only I'm passing the value, but I'm passing the, you know, the unit ID and the address and the quantity and also the Modbus function. And this piece of flow here is another piece of integration that I've built which is basically if I get a, I have a weather station outside and I'm monitoring what is the light level, so the ambient light, which is registered by this uh, weather station. And I have a threshold and that if that threshold is met, then I basically just lower the, light, uh, the blinds. So once it gets dark outside, I just, uh, you know, lower all my blinds. So that's the trigger that comes in and um, well, basically, as you can see, I'm just, you know, setting the values. So I'm setting the corresponding topic, which is going to be mapped here. And I'm set setting the open percent to zero. So basically, the blind goes down. And I just added a little bit of delay. So, you know, one blind starts and the second one goes after one second and the third and the fifth and the sixth. So all the way until I cycle through all my blinds in upstairs. So that's a simple integration. And when it comes to flags, so the lights, then the whole idea is pretty much the same. So when I created all my smart Nora um, lights and sockets and whatnot nodes that I'm using for uh, these uh, flags or these basically one-off devices, I make sure that I maintain the correct topic. So if I change the, for example, if I again ask Google Home to turn on the study light or turn off the study light, then the information, well, um, sorry, a message is going to come out of this node. Uh, the message topic is going to be this and the payload is going to be well, either true or false, whatever I defined here. It goes to this node and then basically everything gets mapped to here and I'm doing the same translation that I have done um, for the blinds. So the payload is, well, it's the payload that uh, Smart Nora gives me, so the true or false. The Modbus function is five, unit ID one. The address, again, I'm getting the flag write port, and here I'm matching the, the device name with the topic. And also there is an offset of 1000 here and quantity one. And that goes to another uh, Modbus flex write. Technically, these two could be the same because even, they, even though I said flag register, I think I should have put register right here and flag right there. But because these are flex nodes, they are the same. So there's nothing here. And there is nothing here other than you know, specifying the server because everything comes through in the message which I've generated in these two function nodes. And, and to be honest, that's, that's pretty much it. So, I mean, that's the flow. And this is, this is a fairly old flow. I mean, I started Gbridge probably in about three years ago. So this has been running for three years without any major modification. And, you know, it's just chugging along reading all this stuff every 10 seconds, reading this stuff every two seconds, checking the data, you know, converting the, uh, the indexes into ID taxis, and then that goes through all these check nodes and then the smart Nora nodes, and it seems to be working fine. And uh, 
so one reason I did this check data because uh, technically I just didn't want to create so many messages. So I mean I could have just piped all this information straight through a smart uh, you know smart Nora and Google Home, but that would mean that you know I'm I'm sending an update every half a second even though nothing happens, and I think that would be uh, I mean that would be just silly. I mean it's a waste of bandwidth, but probably. I mean, it might get flagged up with, you know, either Google or, or any of the integration services that I'm sending so many updates, you know, for all these devices. And, and now I only send an update when, whenever a light is turned on and off. And of course, for, you know, temperatures is definitely going to be more frequent. Maybe I could revisit this code and, and, and do it even more, uh, probably in conjunction with, you know, some changes, because it looks like at the moment it's just only looking at time. But hey ho, that's it. It's uh, nobody has complained so far, so I'm guessing that's uh, you know a fair enough assumption of how I do it and how I update Google Home. So this is an integration how you can basically create a middleware in Node-RED between Modbus and Google Assistant, and there is a lot more that you can do. Mostly because I've only used a few nodes uh, from the Nora integration, so I have lines and I think a few switches, thermostats and lights, and probably a few of these open open closes, maybe one for the garage door. Um, but, you know, there is a lot more on locks and, well, outlets is pretty much like light and speaker. Yeah, not a lot to be honest. And then, yeah, scenes. Yeah, maybe you can do with scenes, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm using probably like 80% of the stuff that anyone would use in a in a smart home integration and how they would use uh, Node-RED, sorry, uh, Google Assistant or Google Home. So I think that would be all. If you are interested in any part of this flow, then just um, let me know in the comment section and I will try to just create some dummy flow where I just you know, be um, put a copy of these main function nodes so you can get the concept and um, you can build your own flow. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully send you the next video.